most networks don't fail because VGP broke. They fail because no one designed the thinking behind them. When I started out, I believed architecture was about choosing the right protocols and drawing the perfect diagrams. Then I walked into a global organization with constant outages, millions spent and high-end care. In the configurations, they were also clever, but every week, another failure. Not because the technology was wrong, but because every team had a different definition of what good looked like. One day, after another long troubleshooting call, I stopped and asked myself, how can I design that is technically correct? Well, that question changed the entire direction of my entire career. I realized the issue wasn't the routers or the configurations. It was the lack of shared understanding, shared priorities and shared intent. The network was built around features, not around the business, the people or the purpose. That's when I stopped thinking like an engineer and started thinking like an architect. And here's what I learned. Uh, architecture starts with people, not packets. If the humans are not aligned, the packets won't be either. A network must reflect how the organization works, how decisions are made, where the pressure points are and what must never fail. I once worked with a company that lost 70,000 pounds in a single hour because one application path wasn't considered critical. That wasn't a technology failure, it was a thinking failure. And trust me, architecture begins with clarity. Next, design is a series of trade-offs, not perfection. Every design choice comes with a cost. A more security means less convenience. More redundancy means more complexity. And more performance means more money. The question is never, is this perfect? The real question is, which cost is acceptable? And that's where architectural maturity lives. I also learned that simplicity is elite engineering. Anyone can create something complicated, but trust me, it takes real mastery to create something simple without making it fragile. Simple networks scale better, fail safer, cost less, and they are easier to secure, and they reduce operational risk. Simplicity is not basic. Simplicity is clarity, margin, and resilience. Architecture is also the craft of boundaries. Uh, predictable networks have predictable boundaries. Uh, failure domains, trust boundaries, control points, escalation paths, and communication channels. These are not walls. They are agreements that prevent chaos. When boundaries are clear, operations become calm and security becomes predictable. And finally, communication matters more than configurations. I've seen beautiful diagrams collapse because no one could explain them simply. The strongest architectures are built through conversations, shared mental models, clarity of intent, and written expectations and also honest trade-off discussions. A network is not shaped by cables, it is shaped by communication. As I grew in this field from an engineer who avoided speaking to someone who advises leadership at a CCDE level, I realized something powerful. Architecture is not what you build, architecture is what you align. When people understand why this decision, why this trade-off, why this boundary and why this complexity or simplicity? The network becomes resilient because the organization becomes aligned. That's when engineering becomes leadership. If you want one practical action to apply this today, here it is. Before touching any technology, write down the top three things the organization values most. Then design to protect, enable and scale those three things only. The single step will transform every design you touch. So yes, we configure protocols. But the true art of network architecture is designing intent, clarity and alignment before the first device is even powered on. If you want the CCDE style framework to apply this in your work tomorrow, comment deep dive and I'll create part 2.